program. Thanks. It's the Joe Pag Show. Great radio stations everywhere. iHeartRadio, Newsmax TV, JoePags.com for all the social media. Fidel Castro died. As a guy who grew up in South Florida, I, I listen, I'm not happy when people die, but I'm very satisfied for my Cuban brothers and sisters who I grew up around. I'm very satisfied for the family members of those who died in rafts trying to go 90 miles to South Florida. Uh, I'm glad that people who have been oppressed and repressed for 50 years uh, and even more um, now have a glimmer of hope. But I was blown away by some of the ridiculous statements I saw about Fidel Castro's death over the weekend. President Obama said this, Today, we offer condolences to Fidel Castro's family and our thoughts and prayers are with the Cuban people. In the days ahead, they'll be, they will recall the past and also look to the future as they do. The Cuban people must know that they have a friend and partner in the United States of America. Ridiculous comment from Barack Obama. And then Jimmy Carter, here's one even better. Jimmy Carter says, Rosalind and I share our sympathies with the Castro family and the Cuban people in the death of Fidel Castro. We remember fondly our visits with him in Cuba and his love of his country. We wish the Cuban citizens peace and prosperity in the years ahead. What? What? He he loved the country that he wanted it to be. He loved the country that he made it, didn't love the people. And when you say, I love this country, you normally mean I love the people. Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau said this ridiculous statement. It is with deep sorrow that I learned today of the death of Cuba's longest-serving president. Fidel Castro was a larger-than-life leader who served his people for almost half a century. A legendary revolutionary and orator, Mr. Castro made significant improvements to the education and health care of his island nation. Uh, Trudeau has been lambasted on, online over that ridiculous statement. Donald Trump, of course, said Fidel Castro is dead exclamation that was his first comment and then he backed it up with this statement the world marks the passing of a brutal dictator who oppressed his own people for for nearly six decades fidel castro's legacy is one of firing squads theft unimaginable suffering poverty and the denial of fundamental human rights and you know what in all of those statements that i just read the only guy that gets it right is donald trump i have the extreme pleasure right now to have joining me on the program judge alex ferrer of course you know him from his television show you know him from all of his appearances the books the, the the radio show judge alex how are you my friend I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. I had to read all of those statements before I got to you because as stunned as I am, and I've got a brother-in-law who's right off a boat from Cuba, um, and, and, and I've known him for 25 years of my life, and I've heard the horror stories of families like yours who left Cuba to get away from this piece of garbage. When you heard the statements from these so-called world leaders, what were your thoughts as somebody from Cuba? Well, I... I, I'm used to it, kind of, because unfortunately, um, you know, most of America doesn't really know anything about Castro other than what, they, you know, they see some people in Hollywood wearing T-shirts with Che Guevara on it yeah. or, or Fidel Castro or things like that. So they don't really know how bad he was. They don't know that, like, as soon as he took power under the pretense that he was replacing a prior dictator who also wasn't very good, but right. certainly wasn't as bad as he turned out to be. Uh, as soon as he took power, he just started summarily executing people. No trials, no anything, just lining up in a wall at, at a wall and shooting them. My, my grandfather was one of the ones who had to flee the country because uh, he was a very well-respected individual in the law enforcement community, and Castro wanted him aboard so that it would lend legitimacy to his, to his regime. And my grandfather said, no, thank you, I'm going to retire. Right. And... Uh, very quickly was told that he was marked for death, and uh, barely barely made it out. But uh, in addition to in addition to the executions, uh, which were carried out by Raúl and uh, and Che Guevara as well, uh, you know, over the years they have basically slaughtered the women and children as well. I mean, when they would catch people leaving the island in a boat, um, if they if they were fortunate enough to catch them. They would ram them with Coast Guard uh, cutters and sink the boat with the, all the people inside. Uh, mm-hmm. They had tugboats flood some of the boats with the people on the tugboat that were fleeing Cuba were surrounded by other tugboats who put fire hoses on them and continued ramming them until they sunk the boat. And, and the women and children, the women were holding up babies for the people in the tugboats to see, look, you know, we've got little children on the boat. They didn't care. I mean, this was the regime he had. If you, you know, he basically. Um, either executed or or led to the death of so many people. And so when I do hear people say things like, 
oh, uh, Cuba has a great health care system and a wonderful education system. You know, I just I shake my head. It, you're getting you're getting all of this information from a regime that lies to the people, lies to the world, and you accept it. And it it makes me scratch my head when I see the media, big media outlets, you know, repeat it as if it's true, and it's not true. The healthcare system in Cuba was very good when Castro took over. It was top notch healthcare system. Right now, there are three healthcare systems. One is for the tourists and for VIPs or members of the Communist Party, right. and that's a decent health care system. And that's the one that that uh, you know Michael Moore went and did the the movie Sicko about right. the right. documentary, pretending that Cuba's health care system is is an absolute uh, model to be copied. The one that the the public gets, the one you and I would get, and all your listeners would get is one of the worst health care systems you can have. The hospitals often don't have running water. Patients in the hospital have to bring their own bed sheets and light bulbs. Uh, doctors reuse um, um, latex gloves. Mm. Uh. They don't have aspirins. Um, but because it's repeated so much, even the media outlets accept it as gospel. Well, what are you talking about? Everybody knows that the healthcare system in Cuba is state of the art, and that's a bunch of garbage. Uh, so I'm not surprised when world leaders um, espouse things like this, because frankly, I, I, I don't think they <laughs> either they don't pay attention or they don't care. I expected more from Obama, frankly. Um, I don't know Trudeau well enough. It is uh, Judge Alex Ferrer. We, we appreciate the time. It's at Judge Alex Ferrer on both Twitter and Facebook. Go and follow him. Go listen to the radio show. Watch him on his, all of his appearances. And again, I'm honored to have you on. You came when you were one. Oh, thank you. So you don't remember what happened you know, with Batista and, and Castro. What did your parents tell you? What did your grandfather tell you about Batista, who that guy was? And, and the fact that people actually welcomed Castro in this revolution to get away from that dictator and then they realized, oh, no, we just put the devil in place. Exactly. Batista was a brutal dictator. Uh, he, didn't, he wasn't as bad as Castro, but he was bad. Um, you know, Cuba was doing well under him, but he was, he was just, you know, my, fa- my reason my grandfather was so well-respected and loved in Cuba as the law enforcement official is because a lot of the police officers in Cuba were, were you know, working under a brutal regime, so they were kind of brutal like a lot of Latin American country cops are. Right. Uh, and so my grandfather was... The kind of officer who, you know, the the citizenry, if they knew that they were being sought for some kind of crime or they were being investigated, they ran and surrendered to him because they knew he wouldn't beat them. Whereas a lot of the other right. police officers, frankly, if they arrested you, they beat you all the way to the police station. And so that was the kind of atmosphere that was there. So, of course, the public was tired of that regime. And here comes, you know, Fidel Castro saying, you know, we're going to overturn this dictator and we're going to have a democracy and you're going to have free elections and you're going to have all these things. And then, you know, once he gets in power, then immediately he, he pretty much consolidates power, says, no, 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 actually, we're going to be a communist regime. And anybody who spoke up, even among his ranks, anybody who spoke up and said, Wait, 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 this is not what we signed on for, or what are you talking about? Cuba's a free country, it's not a communist country. We're, we're shot. We're, they were just taken to the Parón, the, the wall, and lined up, and Che Guevara would have them executed, hundreds of people. You know, a lot of families basically found out because their father was missing, and they were looking for him. And I remember a, a story I saw that on, a, uh, on a TV show that was covering Che Guevara where the, the mother and daughter saw on TV the father, and they said, there he is, there he is. And then as the camera panned out, they watched him be led to the wall and shot. Wow. And that's, that's how the regime started, and it has basically uh, remained that way. You know, people who think Raul Castro is a saving grace, now that Fidel's gone, uh, don't realize that Raul Castro was as bad, if not worse, than Fidel. He was often referred uh, uh, reputed to be more brutal than, than Fidel. Um, you know, Cuba does not, the, the Cuban communist government does not do things that favor the people. When they start allowing limited business opportunities, when they start allowing individuals to open, uh, you know, a pizza shop, they're doing it because they can't feed the people. Wow. They're doing it because they don't have the ability. And then as soon as the enterprise starts getting a little bigger and a little more profitable, they shut them down. 
Or, 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 or take him over. That. Yeah, I watched, or, uh, or I, I don't know if yeah. you watched this show, The the Prophet with Marcus Limonis. This guy is a great guy uh, who went to Cuba. Hey, he's a guy who invested in a lot of businesses. Uh, he's got his great businesses here. He's worth, you know, millions and millions of dollars. He went to Cuba and was talking to some people who are actually succeeding. And they're doing it um, only because the government, as you say, allows them to. And once they get to a certain level of success, the government starts raising the taxes to 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. Or if you're growing, you know, crops, we own the land. You you lease the land from us, the government. I mean, there it really is no free enterprise there at all. And, and you're right. The only reason no. why this is starting to happen is, A, um, uh, Obama, for some reason, is trying to normalize relations with Cuba, and B, they can't feed their own people. Well, that's very true. They can't. And, you know, it was, it was disappointing to me because they were over a barrel, and it was a perfect opportunity to extract some freedoms yeah. from the government, because Cuba has only been able to exist as a communist, re- communist regime because uh, they, they, their sugar daddy was, was the Soviet Union, right. was Russia. So uh, that, that was what kept them afloat. Well, when, when the Cold War ended and the Soviet Union was in shambles, they turned to Venezuela. And Venezuela basically kept them propped up. And then when Venezuela went under, you know, and you've got Argentina under, this is the perfect time to go to them and say, okay, you know what? We're fine with lifting the banking regulations and with allowing American dollars to flow into Cuba. However, in exchange for that, we want certain things. We want some freedom, whether it be freedom of some the press, human rights, freedom of something, expression. Yeah. So, exactly. Get something out of them. Uh, you know, the, the, we got nothing. I mean, when, when Obama went and, and lifted the, uh, the sanctions, the banking sanctions, and allowed Americans to travel there, and, uh, which basically brought in an influx of billions of dollars to their economy, um, I guess what he didn't realize is a communist government like Cuba uses that money. They need that money to oppress the people because it takes a lot of money to, to basically spy on and surveil all of the people who you are subjugating you know you have yeah. to, in order to keep them in check it's a, it's an expensive mechanism so in in giving them that all that money and extracting nothing from them because we didn't get anything we really didn't i mean what did they say they gave us they released 53 political prisoners right who were then summarily arrested weeks later right. okay yeah. uh then they they released that guy alan gross who was uh, uh being held unjustly because he went over there to help the jewish community uh obtain internet access but they said that was not part of the deal they said that was a humanitarian release that had nothing to do with with the deal with president obama so we didn't get that they said that they released a spy that had worked in the military in cuba and had been spying for the u.s but interestingly i've never seen him it, there's, there's no proof of that him. at all it, it's it's judge alex mean, ferrer I, I, it, it's 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 a, a a government built on lies on murder on oppression on repression and i'm just about out of time i could talk to you for about three days on this i do however quickly if, if we can i want to talk about colin kaepernick making 12 to 14 million dollars a year Listen, the, the millennials wearing Che shirts and Che pants and jeans are just idiots who don't know better. But Colin Kaepernick is making 12 to $14 million a year claiming that he's being oppressed. His people are being, uh, are being oppressed. And for some reason, one of his mentors is Fidel Castro. Give me about a minute on that, and I've got to run. But, but your thoughts as a guy from Cuba who's fought your whole life to get some sort of semblance of, of freedom or human rights for the Cuban people, what do you say to that guy if you can talk to him? Well, that just shows me who Colin Kaepernick is. I knew who Fidel Castro was. He's a brutal, murdering dictator. Colin Kaepernick, um, by that action of wearing a picture of Fidel Castro on his shirt, showed me that what he was in for was attention. He wanted people to talk about him. He wanted, he wanted that. Because if you're really for human rights and you're really for freedom for everyone like he claimed he was, you don't wear the image. It's like me wearing the image of, of the, the leader of the Ku Klux Klan and saying right. I'm all about defending black people. Right, That's right. ridiculous. You know, that, that just totally shows you that it, he's not about what he's protesting for. He's about getting attention and having people talk about him. <clears throat> it's the ultimate hypocrisy. Uh, it's Judge Alex Ferrer at uh, Judge Alex Ferrer on Twitter, on Facebook. Have you got a book out right now? I want to make sure that people get to go and connect with you online everywhere they can. No, I don't. But you know what? Reach out to me anytime that uh, you want commentary on something, and I'm happy to come on your show. Love your show. i got to tell you what, uh, uh, Judge, we appreciate you taking the time. It's my absolute pleasure, my friend. And hopefully they'll keep on dancing in the streets in Miami. I'll be down there soon enough. I'll bet they'll continue.
Come down and enjoy it. All right, brother. We appreciate you. There you go. Judge Alex, we'll, uh, we'll get your opinions, your thoughts on what you just heard. I like hooking up with the guy. He's got, again, I don't know what his politics are. M- maybe you do. I don't know what Gloria Stefan's politics are. Maybe you do. I don't know what uh, um, uh, any, any of the politics are of those who are Cuban-Americans commenting on this, but I hear in their voices the relief that we should all be feeling as free Americans, as people who want human rights for others, and it's just not happening, and it blows my mind. 1-800-383-9624, coming right back.